you will now see how the blue gene is optimized to handle either short running transactions or long running transactions. Again, a short running transaction is expected to have only few uh, memory accesses and a long running can have any number of uh, memory accesses. But they will work in a way but with the, a performance penalty if uh, it is used for uh, in the opposite way with short versus uh, long running transaction. Okay, and also and it is decided uh, before the program starts whether a long running transaction, not uh, but whether a long running or a short running transactions should be used. So they cannot be mixed in the same application. Okay, so a transaction uh, usually is uh, speculated, but it can be forced to be non-speculative if it must succeed. And in that case, other transactions uh, that conflict are the ones which will be uh, aborted instead. So how are short-running transactions implemented? What is important is that the L2 cache can detect uh, conflicts. And that is done by letting an L1 load inform the L2 cache that this transaction has accessed in using a read, uh, uh, that it has accessed this cache block. And uh, by noting that, it, it can be detected that this uh, transaction might have read uh, some data that another transaction wrote to, and then there is a conflict. Uh, on the other hand, if there is a, a store to the L1 cache, the entire cache block is removed from uh, the L1 cache, and it is obviously copied to the L2 cache. I mean, it cannot be just forgotten, clearly, uh, then we would lose data. So the data is written as a L2 cache block. And again, it is noted that this transaction has modified this cache block. Not which byte, but that it has modified something in this cache block. Okay, so since uh, the cache block was removed from the L1 cache, uh, if the transaction makes a, another uh, access to this cache block, there will be a, a read miss. But it ex it's expected that th that is not too frequent for short-running transactions. <laughs>